Section 42C is dealing with the uh, constants and exponential functions. And uh, what I want to look at, first of all, is what a power is. So when we're looking at like this, b squared, b cubed, the power of uh, b is 2, the power of b is 3. And then usually we deal with equations uh, up to this point with graphing where the a variable is a base and you have a constant as an exponent. For, for instance, uh, y equals x squared, the variables are the base, and the exponent is, or the power, is a constant number. However, on this uh, part of the lesson, we're looking at what if I were to put that constant in the base and put the exponent, or the power, as a variable. When we do so, we end up with some interesting things. Unfortunately, uh, 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 it, some of it can be confusing uh, for some people because they forget uh, to make it look like something they already know. Uh, many times in math, it's not always uh, figuring out the new way of doing something. It's, we already know how to do it. If it looked like this, can we make it look like that? And then we'll use what we already know. So this is, this is a good example of that. 42.3 is the first example for 42C, and that is asking us to graph y equals 3 to the negative x. Now, if it was just 3 to the x, we've already graphed that. That, that would be fairly easy, and, and we'd just plot our points and go, and we would know what it looked like. Well, unfortunately, that negative up top makes it a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite that as a power with a power, so an exponent to a power by using some parentheses and saying 3 to the negative 1 to the x power. That's going to allow us to simplify 3 to the negative 1. Remember, anything to the negative power like that, I can put uh, underneath the, the, in the denominator, so it becomes 1 over 3 to the 1. When I do so, I, I already know what to do now, because this is 1 over 3 into the x power. A fraction brought to a uh, variable like this, we already know what it graphs like, but I went ahead and put in, well, what if I put in 0? Zero? 0 is always a good place to start. And I th say 0, well, 1 third of the 0 power, anything brought to the 0 power is automatically 1, so I know where it's going to cross. I plot my two extra points here, negative 1, that would flip this again, making it a 3. Right? So at negative 1, it's up at 3. And then I go ahead and put in a 1. That's always another good value. 1 third to the 1 power is 1 third. And we can graph exactly what that looks like. And that is exponential decay. Now, if I look at 42.4, this one is a little more difficult. And, and they like to step it up a little here. This one is saying y equals 1 half to the 2x. Uh, well, once again, I, I don't know what to do. Now, I could just plot points at this point. I could. Unfortunately, it's not going to help me with recognizing these graphs ahead of time. Once again, in the, in the advanced math book, many times we're not technically graphing, we're sketching. And, and that's a good example here is we're just going to sketch these. Notice that I didn't put any points really on this. I just want to know what it looks like. And I don't know what this looks like to begin with. So I'm going to separate this just like I did over here and say, what if I put an extra set of parentheses in there and separated the 2 and the x? And when I do so, I, I'll recognize that 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Well, now I have something I recognize, I know what to do, and I could graph it. This is going to be exponential decay as well. Uh, however, um, I'm going to plug in some points here just to make sure that we're on the right track. It's never a bad idea to plot a couple of points just so we recognize what we're doing. 42.5, once again, we're stepping it up a little bit. Notice these both have a crossing point on the y-intercept uh, at 1. And we would make the assumption uh, every time it must cross at 1. And up to this point, every graph that uh, I believe every graph we've done with, exponent, or with uh, the exponent being a power has been a crossing or a y-intercept of 1. So it's really easy for us to, to make that assumption. 42.5 breaks down that assumption a little bit. And we're going to look at that. 1 half to the negative x minus 2. Now, remember, when I'm working with exponents, if I have <clears throat> a subtraction in here, like this, I can always break them back apart. And the reason I can do that is, remember, that when I multiply a base times another base, what I'm doing is adding exponents. Remember the, the rule, when I multiply bases, I add exponents. So how did I get to this point? Well, I, obviously I looked in the book, but if, how would I have normally got here is I would have said, well, this one right here is really the base for both, so I can separate that into the base for both. So I'm not coming up with an extra one half. It's uh, just like when I have a fraction and, and I say uh, x plus two over three, that really is x plus three 
uh, or x over 3 plus 2 over 3 that had a common denominator. Where did this extra 3 come from? Well, I didn't really get the extra 3 from anywhere. The extra 3 is because it had a common denominator. This is very similar to that. That extra 1 half that you see coming in is not really a 1 half that came from nowhere. It was the base, and these were added together to get to that base so I can separate them back. At this point, remember this would this would this negative can be put inside just like we did over there. And I'll skip the individual step, making this two to the x, making this two to the uh, two power. Well, two squared is pretty easy. That's four. So I take that four. I'm going to put that out front, and I put the parentheses on this, not because the parentheses are required, but if I just wrote this as four and then two, it'd be very easy to look at it as forty-two. So the the uh, four the parentheses help me with just separating that as that is multiplication. Now I can look at this and graph it. We would take, it would be a, a wrong to take this and say, oh, it's anything brought to the uh, exponential power of a variable like that. We'll just graph it with one. But when I start plotting some points, I realize I put my, my favorite number in zero. I end up saying two to the zero power, which is one, times four, which is four. And suddenly I realize that my previous assumption that it must all cross the y-intercept at one does not because this one's y-intercept is going to be four. Now, the only way that works is when this number right here, the coefficient to my constant number, is not a value of one. Every other problem we've had, that has been a value of one, and that's why that crossed at that y-intercept of one. But this one does not. This has a, a, a different intercept value because of this four right here. So I, I know where that is, and if I plot some of these points, notice I say one, well, uh, two to the one power is two times uh, four is eight, and that, that's gonna be, if I come over one, it's all the way up here at eight. And then I look at a negative one, and a, a two to the negative one power is one over two. 1 over 2 times 4 is going to, to or 1 half of 4 is going to be 2. And so if I come back 1, it's up at 2. And, and of course, these are sketches. These are not perfect graphs. But this is going to be ex exponential growth, and it is going to, to, to have a different y-intercept. The biggest thing is to take from this lesson. The first thing is this. You can get different values uh, uh, to, to look like something you recognize by rewriting what it is. The second thing is that if the y-intercept is not always going to be 1. I can change that y-intercept by using a coefficient in the front of the uh, uh, constant number that's brought to the variable exponent.